I'm in Inkscape and I've opened up a public domain comic book cover from the olden days and my mission here is to create a coloring page with this. Now there's three ways that I'm going to show you in this video that you can create a coloring book page and they're pretty straightforward. It's good to know all three methods. So I've got my image opened in Inkscape. I'm going to go to Path and then Trace Bitmap. And really what we've got is are three tabs that we can take a look at here for tracing bitmap. And the first one is single scan. And I'm going to go to brightness cutoff. That's the one that I think most people use when they're in Inkscape. Now when I've got the image selected, I can simply select update preview and you'll see it's really, really dark. So if I were to hit the apply button now and scan it, that's not gonna make a very good coloring book page. It's way too dark. So I'm gonna click the delete key, click my image again, and I'm gonna lower the threshold right down to say, 25. I'm going to click the update preview again. We can see significantly different. Now the reason it's significantly different, I'm just going to hit apply here. We can see that could work as a coloring book page because it's got a lot of well-defined lines. And that's one of the things you want to look for in a public domain picture like a comic book cover are well-defined inked lines. This is why comic book covers make such great coloring book pages. And we can see when we create a comic book page, it can be lighter or darker, and we want to get a nice match in there. Now I can clean up this image as well, and what I'll do is click the image, go to Edit Paths by Node, which is the second one down on the left-hand side, and that's going to create now all the different nodes. Now I'm not too worried about the number of nodes because I'm not creating a cut file. I'm not selling this as a cut file. I'm just, I want to clean up the image so that any little stragglers, like for example right up here there's these motion lines. So I'm going to click Edit Pass by Node. I can zoom right in and I can just simply highlight them and I can click the Delete key and that now gets rid of those and it's completely clean. So you can clean up an image relatively easily. I'd probably make this scan a bit darker to try to get some more detail on the faces, for example. Method number two is instead of going to single scan, I'm going to jump over here to the middle tab, which is multi-color. And from here, I'm going to go to colors. Now I've got a bunch of scans that I can change. I'm going to go down to two scans and I'm going to click update preview. Now you'll notice on the right hand side, it's only now a monochrome color because it's really just two scans. It's going to be the background color and then black. So I want to increase this scan each time to find something that looks pretty close to what the comic book cover actually is. Looks like six scans is close but he's still green there. The trunks are still green. I'm going to go to eight and we can see it's getting better. I want those trunks to turn blue and there we go on the ninth scan the trunks are now blue. So that's about as good as it's going to get. Now I'm going to click apply. Now you might be thinking, what's the point in doing a color scan if we want a coloring book? I'm going to move this off to the side and I'm going to delete out the original image. So what we're left with now is a color scan. And what I really care about is that it scanned all the black. So I'm just going to simply double click the image. And what I can do now is I can carefully drag out the different colored pieces. So I'm going to drag that out. I'm going to click on the red. I'm going to drag that out, or I guess it's orange. I'm going to click on the brown, drag that out. And what I'm being slowly left with here as I take the green off is just the black. So I'm not saying this is going to work every time. It depends on the other underlying image, but it's good to know that you've got this option where you can take out everything except the black. You just have to touch a color. And what you're left with now is the black. I'm just going to take off the brown. There it is there. So in this case, this didn't work so great because the black wasn't pronounced enough, but in some cases this could work. So here's a little tip or a little trick that might work once in a while. Here I've got my nine color scan and I'm going to simply double click the image and I'm going to drag off the red, I'm going to drag off the blue, I'm going to drag off the green. So I've pulled away all the colors except for the black and in this case the brown. So I've got a couple scans here and I'm going to actually remove out the brown here and I'm going to keep this brown. So I've had out of the nine scans, I'm actually going to keep two. I'm going to highlight them both and I'm going to align them. Now the align button is way down on the right hand side. It's about third from the bottom. So I'm going to select both objects, select the align button and then here now I've got a menu so I can align them to be centered on a vertical axis and then I can also center it on a horizontal axis. So it essentially made the image now sitting on top of each other. I'm going to click Control A just to make sure they're both selected. And then here's the key. I'm going to change them now both to black. Down at the bottom there's a color palette. I'm going to click the black button. 
and now it makes them both black. I'm just going to separate them out again. We can see this now, which used to be brown, is now black. So using this method, if you've got another colored scan that you think could look good, give it a try. You might find the result will give you a second line of black that could be helpful. And the third method's pretty cool, although I don't use it very much in Inkscape. It's really only for coloring book pages. What I'm going to do now is over on the right-hand side, I'm going to go back to single scan. And what I'm going to do now is go to edge detection. Now there's a threshold at the top. I'm going to leave it at default at 65%. I'm going to click update preview. And we can see now it only shows the edges. I'm going to click apply. And you can get some really funky effects with this. So you will have to mon monkey around with the edge threshold. When I pull this out, we can see now we're left with what is basically an outline of the image. And that could, I say could, look good as a coloring book page. You would probably have to clean up some of the interior lines or some comic book pages are going to look better than others. But this could look really good on, on complicated pages. So I'm going to show you a different example. So here's a comic book page that's relatively complicated. There's a lot of ink lines on it and a lot of different colors. So what you might want to do is just try edge detection. So I'm going to go up here to single scan, edge detection, click update preview, and I can see that looks decent. I'll click the apply button. And relatively quickly, it creates a scan that is an outline. I'm just going to delete out the original image. And we can see that actually doesn't look too bad. If you're looking for a quick way to create a comic book cover, this could definitely be acceptable. I'm not suggesting just go right to print like this. But you could go in and you could update this by cleaning it up. So for example, there's these little nodes right there. I'm going to click Edit Paths by Node. And I can go in now and I can see these little stragglers here. I can click Delete, highlight them, and delete them. So it would take some time. No one method is going to do this perfectly every time. But if you're looking for a decent scan, this could be a neat method. Hope you found that helpful. Inkscape is completely free. You can download it. I'll put a link in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching. And here's another video on how you can supercharge your print on demand and your digital selling using Inkscape.